Hello friends, Bolt Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at the Ultra Dino Force. I picked up this entire set of figures over at SirToys.com. They're dinosaurs that turn into robots. Now, I originally thought that they combined, but they don't. Uh, that was just my misunderstanding. And all of these figures are a bit on the weird side. So, let's go ahead and get into it. We're starting off with the Red Ranger, or... <laughs> the Red Ranger, yeah, Tyrannosaurus. It's okay. It doesn't hold together all that well in beast mode or tyranno mode, but it looks pretty good. It's got nice big old feet, the tail is obviously the robot legs, and the overall aesthetic works pretty well. It's also incredibly well painted. All of these figures have better paint than just about anything Hasbro has released recently, which is just weird to me. I like the figure in this mode. I think it is a little bit strange in the fact that things just don't hold together. Like, the head splits apart at the top, but it doesn't hold together all that well. The mouth has a tendency to flop open, and the legs do have a tendency to move about on their own as soon as you pick the figure up. Nothing crazy. Oh, and uh, this whole section, the head section, has a tendency to just droop a little bit. Nothing awful, just odd. Just, just odd. Transformation for our red dino here is very easy. To start off with, come to the rear legs, or the rear legs, yes. The legs, which will become the robot mode shoulders, unpeg them from where they are and hinge them up towards the front of the dino mode. Then come down to the tail, straighten it out, push the little crotch skirt down, unpeg the tail from itself, turn the knees so that they are pointing towards the top of the dino mode, and fold up the feet on ball joints, then just stand the figure up, like so. Uh, if you do it this way, it is going to fall over because there's a lot of weight hanging up back there. Now coming to the torso mode of the robot, grab the arm or the legs and fold them down. Fold the legs straight as well as straight as they can go. Fold up the rear toe. Turn the feet around 180 degrees and fold them up to the back of the forearms to relieve to reveal the fists and do the same thing on the other leg straighten it out turn it 180 fold up the toe flip it up to form the arm now come to the dino head take the little dino arms fold them up to the top of the bottom jaw fold that whole section down and then we can open up the dino head and it's Supposed to, I think, just kind of fold like this and just rest back here where you turn the head 180 degrees. I actually don't have any directions for this entire set, so I could be completely wrong here, but it looks like, or it has the ability to fold all the way up like this, and then you can put the dino head up kind of like that, but that doesn't look that great, so folding it up. Fold the mouth all the way open, and then fold these dino arms in to kind of lock and hold the dino heads in place. And then you get the robot mode. Oh, and before I forget, each one of the robot modes comes with different weapons that cannot be stored in dino mode. The robot mode we end up with looks really cool. The paint is good, the overall aesthetic works incredibly well, and it's just cool looking. Head sculpt is also good. It works very well. It looks like a, a Shogun mask of some sort. And it, it looks more like a the head of a lion than that of a T-Rex. Eh, oh well. Posability for the figure is also good. Head is on a swivel. Shoulders are on ball joints. There is a swivel at the forearm for wrist articulation. The wrists also articulate. On a swivel and then there's plenty of movement the the torso articulation a series of hinges in the hips figure cannot kick out that far though a hinge for a knee and then a swivel underneath that and a ball joint at the foot so you can get off some decent articulation and poses for this guy however the hinges that allow the shoulders to move up and down are far too loose and the figure is top-heavy because of all this junk in the trunk, and or I should say junk on the back, and then the, well, the forearms are a little bit big. But you can get some, as I said, decent posing out of it. Now, the weapon is this unit that you 
kind of peg in like this, and it reminds me of Gundam Exia's sword that folds back only so far and then flips forward and can be held exactly like Gundam Exia's sword. And it can be held by either one of the hands. It's an odd choice, but it does work. Again, you cannot store that sword in dino mode, which is a shame. Overall, I think it's pretty neat, just a lot of the joints need to be tightened up a bit. Next up is the yellow velociraptor, and oh my! <laughs> this is, um, yeah, this is, this is, oof, this is, yeah, okay. So, in raptor mode, his mouth opens and closes, but it wants to stay open all the time. There is articulation here in the, sh in the little dino arms, articulation in the legs, though I'm very thankful that the ball joints and the knees for the robot mode are as strong as they are. It's not the best raptor mode in the world, we'll say. It's got a few design issues. Okay, yeah, it's it's also... It, I get what they're going for. It, fe it really feels like they were going for a kind of a Zoid look. I, I don't know if they nailed it, though. Okay, so transformation into robot mode is ridiculously simple. And I swear, I think I've seen this transformation. In fact, I, I, I swear... I swear a dinosaur transformer transforms like this, but I can't remember which one. So transformation starts by taking the legs, straightening them out, come to the feet, fold up the dino feet, and then turn the feet 180 degrees, and then push the crotch skirt down, turn the legs towards the, well, what would be the chest of the robot mode. You could tell because there are no screw holes there straighten out the top torso of the raptor mode, come to the top and unpeg this whole section and this will become part of his backpack, turn the robot head so it's facing to, towards the front, come underneath the right armpit and then swing the dino arms around to the back and then the, or this thing is supposed to be able to peg on to something in the back here Specifically, I think it's supposed to peg into that little peg right there, but it kind of does, kind of doesn't. It's not exactly great. Fold the arm down, flip out the fist. I'm sorry, fold the left arm down and flip out the fist. Then grab the raptor head and open up the mouth and just kind of open it and wiggle it such that we could flip out the fist here and... This, getting this fist out is incredibly difficult. I end up having to use like a sword or just something else to flip the fist out. And then you're, I'm not really sure what to do because the dino mouth kind of closes up over the fist anyway. I would think that the whole mouth would slide down over the fist, but it doesn't. So yeah, uh, just it's weird. The robot mode we end up with looks pretty good color-wise. Black, blue, yellow, and silver. Though the overall aesthetic of the robot mode is just a bit off. I do think the head sculpt works well. It is well designed, well detailed, and well painted. Though the posability on it is a little bit suspect. It does have up and down movement and side to side movement. It is on a ball joint, but that ball joint is highly limited. The rest of the figure posability swivels in the shoulders swivel just underneath the shoulder, which can move in and out, bend at the elbows on both elbows, articulation on the left arm is a little bit hampered because of the shield slashing weapon, but if you move it, you can swivel the wrist around a little bit. Shield slashing weapon can be mounted on the arm, or it can be held in the fist. Torso articulation, a very strange shaped ball joint at the hip, for in and out movement and up and down for the raptor mode. Hinge just above the knee, then a ball joint at the knee, ball joint in the ankle. So you can pull off some decent poses, though there is one heck of a backpack. There is this thruster section that acts 
I'm assuming as a thruster in robot mode, but then you've got the dino arms hanging off of it. And there's really no way to put the... Well, you know what? I haven't tried it. So let's see if we could get the thruster to wrap over the backpack with the dino mode and see if that might work. Because there is a peg hole there. So let's see if that can, can work. I'm going to guess no... But we can always try... No, that does not work. Oh, and you do have to be careful. You, there are ball joints that pop off plenty on those raptor arms. So, yeah, just just be aware of that. Because I can't remember how many times I've popped that. Oh, there's, there's got to be a better way to mount this backpack on here than this. Ah, anyway... So we'll just return it back to the way it was, because that was the only way that I could get it to slide on there. I think the robot mode is fine. I think the robot mode works pretty well. It is a little bit flawed. The skirt armor doesn't lock into place, and the mouth here just kind of flops open, and there's that whole thing with the backpack, but the overall aesthetic works well. And, I don't know, I'm just a sucker for anything black, yellow, and blue, and silver. Next up is the blue pterodon, and this is probably one of the worst, or actually, this is the worst dino mode of the set. It's real bad. It doesn't hold together well. The wings barely stay up on their own, though it does have one heck of a wide wingspan. I mean, that's well over 12 inches. The head in dino mode can't look up all the way, but the mouth can open. And the face isn't well painted. And it's literally just the robot mode leaning over. I originally thought that you could push the robot mode down into the chest, but that doesn't work at all. It really reminds me of Swoop from... Or is it Strafe from The Last, the last Action Hero? Yes, no, that is the wrong movie. Age of Extinction. The dino mode is not great in fact. It's, it just isn't. Transformation is insanely simple. Stand the figure up, fold the dino legs up in a humanoid fashion, fold up the dino feet, which are very difficult to flip back out, turn the dino feet around to form normal robot feet. The shoulders are folded in in dino mode. They fold back kind of on their own fold the wings such that they just sit on the back well. Oh, yeah, the tail is fully or is somewhat articulated. That just folds down. Then take the dino head and split it apart like that. Oh, jeez. Ah, come on. So one of the things I don't like about this dino mode is the top part or the crest of the head for the dino mode pegs in very tight. The front doesn't so much. Open it up. Fold the robot head back down, and then fold the dino head in like strafe from Age of Extinction. And then, yeah, that's kind of it. The thing that really, really sucks is the shoulders don't peg in or have no way to peg into place. So they just flop about anytime you move the figure. And the, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, you know what? Let's do a. Let me get this posed in a decent way and then give you an up-close personal look at it. The blue, white, and black paint of the figure work incredibly well. However, the white is not applied evenly in some places, so you get the original blue peeking through, especially on the dino heads. The overall look of the robot mode is good. It looks really cool. It just holds together like crap. The head sculpt is also really nifty, except I can't tell where the eyes are. I think they're right there, but the rest of the just giant head makes this squishy tiny little face. It's just odd. The figure comes with this awesome sniper rifle that is just a little bit too big for the hand. And also, I'm holding it in the back, I realize that, but I can't actually get the figure to hold it anywhere else unless I put the left hand in the front, and then the right hand in the back, and then I can't get it to actually wield it in any sort of decent way. And I 
swear I've seen this gun before somewhere else. And it was two pieces because it looks like there's supposed to be one gun starting here forward and then another gun starting here and going back. I swear this was supposed to be two guns that formed into one, but oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on a second. Holy moly. Would you look at that? Huh. Again, I have no directions, so I have no idea if I'm doing anything correctly. There we go. It's got two guns now. Too bad the shoulders are complete and total garbage. And the hips and legs don't, while are tight, don't want to stay where they are. Nothing pegs into place. All right, see? And then the shoulders. You just move the, yep, see? Yep, shoulders. This could be a fantastic figure. It could be. It really could be. It just needs something to lock the legs into place and something else to lock the shoulders into place. Otherwise, it's just a floppy mess. Next up is the Stegosaurus, and this this is a loose definition of a Stegosaurus, or I'm sorry, a very loose interpretation of a Stegosaurus, if I ever did see one. So, I mean, it's, it's a robot laying down with its feet sticking out. I, that's it. I, I mean, maybe my friend Piaw would actually like this as a Stegosaurus, but I, I don't know. This is not the best Stegosaurus in the world, if you know what I mean. It's... They tried. I'll give them that. They tried. So, props for that. The Stegos transformation is pretty darn easy. To start off with, come to the front legs, fold them up, and they will peg into these pegs sticking off the sides. So just fold them up, peg them in. Then reach to the front of the Stego head and fold the entire head up underneath the figure, flipping out the feet. Then you could split the front of the figure in half to fold it up or to fold out the legs, flip up the rear of the of the stego mode and turn the entire rear 180 degrees, and then stand this stego up while straightening out the legs, or knees, I should say. Then fold down the arms like that, fold up the chest, take these sections that are, well, so these sections that form the rear of the spines you can leave them here as they are. They look like they're supposed to peg into place. So what you're supposed to do is grab them and then fold them around the shoulders like this. Fold them up and then they're supposed to peg into these spots or screw holes right back there or somewhere else on the figure. But I cannot make that work. At least, I think they're supposed to do that. Ugh. Also, I think this is supposed to split open somehow for the robot mode, but it serves no purpose. There's nothing in here, nor is there any real way to flip it out or anything? I don't know. And the pictures on Sir Toys don't I mean, they, they just show it folded up like this. So that's the way I'm going to do it. Just stand the figure up. Oh, and last but not least, it has this weapon. Which possibly, possibly could be stored in the tail section. But again, I don't know. The white, yellow, black, and blue all work incredibly well for this figure. The robot mode is striking. And it looks just menacing. Head Sculpt is also incredibly good. I love the look of it. It looks angry, swept back, and is ready to start something. Ball joint in the head gives it a lot of posability. There's also ball joints in the shoulders, ball joints in the hips. And, well, this figure is highly posable. There's also a ball joint in the torso, giving it an ab crunch. Hinges in the legs, ratchets in the knees, uh, not much in the feet. As I said, ball joint, or actually a series of hinge joints in the shoulders, and then a real set of hinge joints, set of hinge joints in the elbow. Fists do swivel. 
So you could get some decent poses out of this guy. Nice big heels to counter out the counteract the weight in the back from the backpack. So yeah. Lastly, we have the Triceratops, and the Triceratops is big and green, and kind of hollow from the back. That's yeah, all right. Now, this transformation really reminds me of Transformers Age of Extinction Slug. It just, it just does for some reason. The sides of the dino mode are actually pegged into place in the back of the shoulder and in the thigh of the robot mode. So just be aware, if you pick up this figure, you could snap these pegs very easily. Fold them up, fold the section behind the head up and out of the way, and then I like to accordion the sides in like that. Stand the figure up, fold the legs up, and flip out the feet. Or I should say, just flip around the feet, not flip them out. Oh, uh, the tail is articulated, so you've got a couple points of articulation here. Fold the front arms down and fold the dino feet up into the forearms. Then this entire front dino head pulls off like that. And you're left with this bruiser of a robot mode. Oh, and flip the fists out. And then you're also left with this shield that has a bent p pin, which, fine, you jerks. I mean, look at that. Look at that pin. That's completely bent. This robot mode reminds me of a USA football linebacker. It's very cool. I like this robot mode a lot. The black, the green, the white. The gold all work incredibly well. And it's got my favorite head sculpt next to the Stegosaurus. That head sculpt is just cool. It looks beefy and brawny and ready to smack you around. Figure articulation is also incredibly good. Head is on a ball joint and can only look forward and down that much. Shoulders are a set of hinges and ball joints. Or hinges. I keep saying hinges and ball joints. Hinges and swivels. Hinge at the elbow, swivel at the wrist, and then in and out movement for the transformation. Torso articulation is there, but it is greatly limited. Series of hinges at the knee, though the bulkiness of the thighs do limit it. Ball joint in the knee, and I meant hip, not knee. Ball joint in the ankle. And then you can get additional articulation and additional, I would say... Oh, what would you say? Uh, stability, thanks to the tail. Something I just thought about. Can you... Nope, those are screwed in place. Darn it, I was hoping that maybe I could take this, turn it 180 degrees, and then give the torso some more swivel, but unfortunately I cannot. Oh, and that is what's limiting the torso swivel, is the thickness of the, of the abdomen. Now, his weapons are really interesting. Well, we already know about the giant shield that doesn't really work all that well that you can peg into the hand. Ugh, well, I'll do that off camera. But he also comes with this giant fist for some reason. Why? That just slips over his normal fist and you've got a giant freaking fist for s some reason. I, that doesn't make any sense. His weapon is the Infinity Gauntlet. Okay, it's not really the Infinity Gauntlet, but go with me here. This whole set of figures is perfectly okay. They're not terrible, but they're not great. They also, they have wonderful paint apps. Each of the Dino Modes looks okay, but they have some real issues with the joints, and some of the stuff just doesn't hold together that well. Far and away, the, the Pterodon is the worst. The blue Pteranodon, Pterodon, whatever, is the worst. The best... That's a good question. I think my favorite is the green Triceratops, followed by the Stegosaurus and the Tyrannosaurus, and then the uh, Raptor, and then in dead last is the bird. Okay, it's not really a bird, but you know what I mean. Overall, they all look good, but they all don't hold together all that well, and some of them don't have the best dino modes. So... My favorite dino modes are red, green, uh, yellow, white, blue. Now, size-wise, they are all just a smidge shorter than MP10 Prime, but they are all definitely bigger than a current Voyager class figure. 
and I keep knocking over Stego. I'm trying to find an ultra class figure. Give me a second. There we go. They're all roughly the same size as ultra class Ultra Magnus. So yeah, that that's a decent comparison. Not that you can you know see here. Let me move behind there. There you see, he's roughly the same size as all of these dudes. They're just a smidge shorter. Each one of these figures retails for $13 over at SirToys.com. I would recommend picking up red, green, and white. Uh, keep yellow and blue off to the side somewhere. Now, if they were selling for 8 bucks, I would say yes, just go ahead and get them. But I think 13 is actually a little bit on the high side. I still like this set, though. But again... I think 13 is a little bit high. 10, 8 to 10 would be a better asking price. So keep an eye on Sir Toys and see if they ever go on sale. So let me know what you think of these figures down in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and be sure to hit that bell so you know when a new video is out. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Ball Matrix, and I'll catch you all next time.